raised, do the maintenance on it, bearings, get the full nine yards done. And then we're gonna have a remote control put on it. And uh, that will be way cool and a very nice feature because when you're pulling away, it'd be great to be able to start putting that thing down instead of having to, uh, you know, um, stop, then get out, put it down. All it's gonna do is just save time, you know? Let's see. Well, backup camera is pretty cool, works well and everything like that. This has got the big jack. I'm gonna end up getting this one taken off and uh, get one of those hydraulic jacks put on here. It's a nice trailer. It's got the big high sides. This thing's already set up for a 45 to 50 squares of shingles. And uh, as you can see, there's not a whole lot in there. We'll go ahead and put the tarp on it. Be safe going down the road. We don't want any ticket from the DOT. So. Big thing is, is you always want to make sure that you got a wheel chalk there. You know, you just never know. I mean, they're throwing hundreds of pounds of materials in here at any given time, and it could just decide to cut loose. I back them up on inclines, and so you got to make that you got chalks on there so that every time that uh, they throw something in there, it doesn't go down or out or something of that nature and whatnot. But you know, you just need to be careful with what you're doing. Use some common sense when you hook to your trailer. Always make sure you do a double look, okay? And what I mean by that is you check, make sure your hitch is locked, your safety chains are attached right there, your breakaway cable is attached, and then your lights are hooked up, okay? Go ahead, you walk around your trailer. I've already done that twice, but then come back here, look again start from the bottom up safety chains are done you come up to your hitch come over here yep that's locked in place safety pins on there next thing okay my lights are plugged in and everything i'm good to go the foot from your jack is off of the that means we're ready to roll however if you'll notice in the video i haven't pulled the wheel chocks i did that on purpose so that i'd walk around the trailer one more time we also got to put the tarp on it to be totally ready to go all right now what we're going to do is we got this rope that's tied onto our bar right here this bar right here floats on these sides on top you throw the rope all the way to the end you go around you're going to pull it to you and it's going to go whoop all the way to the end there and we'll lock her down there we go we'll be able to grab that see this is how we end up with it then you take this you just walk it on back. Boom, there you have it. That thing's locked in place and ready to go. You always want to make sure to take your rope. We'll put it right up in here. We got the rope stowed away right there. It's underneath your hooks on each end. We'll come over here. Put your lock in there. Boom, it gets tight. That's the way it rolls. Safety is job one, okay? Make sure that you get into a routine. Follow that routine, don't break it. If you do, stop and totally start all over. And what I mean by that is, is that you start your whole process. I don't care if you're 100% convinced that you did something, go back and do it again. It's very important, okay? Thankfully, I've only had one trailer ever come off the ball going down the road. It was because, I can't say for sure, but I'm willing to bet that I did not lock it down like I was supposed to. Went through an intersection that was had some dips to it because of the opposing lanes that I was crossing. I think it hopped off of there. Thank God I had the safety chains on. We were able to pull over, get everything situated. Nobody got hurt. Nothing got destroyed or anything of that nature. However, it could have been catastrophic, okay? You always make sure you walk around that trailer twice so that everything is good to go. Check and double check. And also remember that if you have somebody else with you and they hook your trailer up, 
you are responsible regardless of if they did it or not. So if anybody's riding with me, I always double check them. I do the same thing. It's never that I believe they're incompetent or I don't trust them. It's just my responsibility. And if I did not do that, somebody makes a mistake and I kill your kids, are you going to sit there and accept, well, you know, I didn't want him to feel like uh, I didn't trust him or he wasn't confident, so I didn't go back and check his work? No. Nah. You're going to be like, you're an idiot. You're the driver. You're responsible. You are legally accountable for anything that happens with your vehicle. Don't ever forget that kind of hard for you to see but over on that side there's a mailbox and a car right there we might be able to make that turn but here's the thing folks there what do I gain by taking that risk absolutely nothing there's not going to be any kind of payoff or anything of that nature okay so don't be stupid all right now you come over here oh my god look at it man it's wide open for about a hundred yards right there so Obviously, when I, I'm pulling out, I'm going to make me a left-hand turn, okay? There's two intersections right there. There's no obstructions, no cars parked there. I can make a right-hand turn, a left-hand turn, whatever I need to at both of them. So much of this business is just common sense, okay? And I understand that common sense is not so common these days, but, you know, just try. Work with me. I'm trying to work with you. And, uh... Let's have a good experience that's pro productive and profitable because if you're having to pay for something that you're breaking, it's never profitable. We're actually going to call a gentleman with roll-off dumpsters. Would he be considered to be competition? Absolutely. However, he is a resource because when I get overloaded, I call him. He'll go put a can on site. And as far as the customer's concerned, that's me telling him yes, so he'll continue to shop with me. And that's absolutely crucial. The nature of my call with him is, is to see if um, there's a big line at the dump this morning because it's going to be nasty with this rain coming and everything like that. So it is uh, not a good day. And that might be why none of the roofers got a uh, can from me last night is because they're probably not going to be doing any roofing today. All right, we got a backup here at the landfill, naturally. Wide open space. You got one truck way over there that's getting dumped and everything. Not sure about this, but I can tell you this much. They probably ought to get some of the people that work at Chick-fil-A to come out here. They could get this stuff going now. That's what I'm talking about. They can run two lines through the drive through without any problem. Have y'all wondered how it is that Chick-fil-A is able to make that happen? I mean, it's just absolutely incredible. For some reason, I got a sneaky suspicion we're going to be locking it into four-wheel drive before we get out of here in the next 20 to 30 minutes. I got a bad feeling. Just saying. See right there? If that guy had remote control, that thing would be down and so when he stops, all he would have to do is just close the back gate and be done. He'd be gone. Now look at that. That's the first time I've seen a back gate like that. That one stretches all the way across. Pretty cool. That's a nice trailer right there. Short bed truck. Great for hauling type places. That's a good setup right there. Scissor lift is on the front half. It's more capable of being able to dump nothing wrong with that got the nice high sides on it that old boy in that forward right there he's having some trouble he had to get out lock his hubs in he's all over the place while he's backing up i don't know if that's his driving or if it's just rough right now but we got that dodge right there that's a regular cab with an eight foot bed got a dump on it he was in and out of there pretty quick so it's uh it's looking pretty good for him and whatnot I ain't never dull around here at the dump and everything like that. Yep. Oh, what a beautiful place, you know. Beautiful, beautiful. Got that old boy's unlocking that four-wheel drive. Yep, he's about ready to go. Right here, folks. Yes, sir, indeed. You gotta love it. You gotta love all of it. Check that out. 
boom, there you have it. Nice and easy. Love the way that was there. And they're telling us that we need to drop it up here so we're not able to stop. It's just one of them things. There's a big old lineup. Well, the good thing is we did not have to lock it in four wheel drive. And uh, so we are about to pull up right here, stop, put it down, fasten the gates. Go in here, get this here controller. Definitely need some grease. truck needs a cleaning that's a working man's truck right here now look at that trailer right there that's a max D and I love how the sides are on it and everything like that wider that's a fine trailer right there now this is the guy I was telling you about earlier that I was gonna call but I ended up not doing it but he's got a roll-off system that he uses he really likes that and everything and I had a customer that I had to call and uh, get him to put a can on location and so it's really not competition but you got to view it as being re having a resource we scratch each other's back and stuff like that so there's no sense in being high school about this it so cool in these old houses you find these things like that i love this kind of stuff i'm here we're doing an estimate on a uh, flat roof i'm gonna get the contract signed um, i need to go up on top get some pictures of the roof so I can turn in uh, you know this is all before 10 30 a.m. this morning all right fat boy came up that ladder right there we gotta love that stack right there that's totally incorrect we are just going to be replacing the flat roof right here All righty, contract is signed. We're headed to the office, get that thing turned in. We're going to print the pictures of the fascia and soffit that are going to have to be replaced, pictures of the that needs to be done as well. And I uh, need to get out and take a picture real quick of the uh, house itself. Well, got uh, handed uh, four W-2, or not W-2s, but uh, no, five. 1099s from a gentleman that I work with and uh, he said Rob you got the most out of anybody I said well I must be special he said you're right you are and uh, I don't know if that's like the special cousin or special in a good way but that means we did make some money and uh, <laughs> so it is what it is and uh, you know you got to pay the tax man Caesar bringeth and Caesar taketh and you don't ever want to get mixed up with the IRS, so I always suggest make sure you pay them taxes. And there you have it. We got the line up at the yard. No, these are not all mine. These three are mine. Fourth one is at the shop getting maintenance done and some backup lights. And all stuff. right, we went and collected rent. Now we're going to drop off a compressor and... Just a tip for you. If you got rental properties and they call you and say, hey, I got the rent, you make sure you go as soon as possible, okay? You would not believe the amount of things that can happen from the time they call you till you actually get that rent, and God forbid you wait hours, okay? You would not believe that the crack man can come by, the Buddy Byright uh, TV Center can come by, the uh, new Air Jordans can come by, you know, the list goes on and on. So you want to make sure you go collect that rent 
What's the name of the game? Get that money.